Welcome back. In this video, I'm going to show you how to launch an EC2 instance. Let's begin. I've logged into my EC2 management console. When you log into AWS, you can use the services tab over here to drop down and select EC2 to start launching an EC2 instance. Make a note of the region. Currently, I'm in the Mumbai region. To launch an EC2 instance, We'll start by clicking on this button over here called Launch Instance. On step number one, we are required to select an Amazon machine image, also known as an AMI. In one of the earlier lectures, we understood about AMIs. If you haven't looked at it, I'd highly recommend that you watch that video and come back over here. If you are just starting out with AWS, I would recommend that you turn on this checkbox over here which is called as free tier only. This will make sure that you do not launch instances which are not eligible for the free tier. Right now, I'm gonna go with this one over here, which is the Amazon Linux AMI. It's a Linux image with a lot of good stuff on it. For example, it has Python, Ruby, Perl, Java, Docker, PHP, and all of that good stuff installed on it. So I'm gonna select the Amazon Linux AMI, click on select, on step number two, we need to select an instance type. Essentially, you need to select the instance family and the instance type. We discussed about instance types and instance families in one of the earlier lectures as well. Right now, I'm gonna select general purpose T2 Micro, just because it is free tier eligible. Click on next, configure instance details. Over here, we have a bunch of configurations. Number one, we need to select the number of instances to launch. Right now, I'm gonna leave it at one. Over here, you have the option to request spot instances. We discussed about spot instances in the video on EC2 purchasing options. I'd recommend that you check that out. We can then select the VPC and the subnet in which we'd like to launch an EC2 instance. We've not discussed about VPCs and subnets yet. Right now, I'm going to leave everything at the default setting. Once we understand VPCs and subnets, this should start to make sense. The next option is to auto assign a public IP. This setting over here decides if your EC2 instance will get a public IP or not. Right now, I'm going to drop down and say yes, because I'd like to connect to this EC2 instance. We can also attach an IAM role to this EC2 instance but right now I'm not gonna do that. The next setting is for shutdown behavior. When you stop the EC2 instance, what should happen? Do you want the instance to be stopped or do you want the instance to be terminated? What's the difference between stopping and terminating? Well, if you stop an EC2 instance, you can reboot that instance with the same configuration. But if you terminate the instance, all your settings are gone. If you'd like to get that instance back, you have to configure it the way we are doing it right now. Right now, I'm gonna leave it at stop. This option over here called enable termination protection will prevent the EC2 instance from being terminated. So if you have an EC2 instance, which is mission critical, you wanna make sure that nobody can terminate the EC2 instance, this is a good option. As long as you have this option turned on, the EC2 instance cannot be terminated. If you still want to terminate it, you have to change the setting, turn the setting off, and then terminate your EC2 instance. The next one is monitoring. There are two types of monitoring. You have basic monitoring and you have detailed monitoring. Basic monitoring is every five minutes. You get five minute metrics and that is free of cost. But if you'd like detailed monitoring, which is every one minute metric, you'll have to enable this option over here. Right now, I'm gonna leave it the way it is. The next option is tenancy. And we have three tenancy models, shared, dedicated instance, and dedicated host. We already discussed about dedicated instances and dedicated hosts in the EC2 purchasing options video. Right now, I'm gonna leave it at the default, which is shared. Over here, we have some advanced settings. If you'd like to enter some startup scripts, this is the place to do that. Right now, 
I'm gonna leave it the way it is and click on next for add storage over here you can decide the size of your root volume by default for Amazon Linux AMI it allocates a size of 8 GB we can increase that if needed and notice what it says over here free tier eligible customers can get up to 30 GB of EBS general purpose SSD volumes or even magnetic storage for Amazon Linux AMI 8 GB is good if you'd like to have additional volumes you can click on add new volume select your volume size and your volume type right now I'm gonna leave it at the default which is a single volume of size 8 GB next we can apply some tags tags are effective for filtering your EC2 instances if you have a lot of EC2 instances and you'd like to quickly filter them out tags can be very handy so right now I'm gonna apply a name tag I'm gonna click on this one over here click to add a name tag and I'm gonna call this as web server we can apply more than one tag you can see over here we can add up to 50 tags it is always recommended that you tag your EC2 instances at a minimum you should at least have the name tag on it that helps you in filtering your EC2 instances I'm gonna click on next to configure the security groups we already discussed about this in one of the earlier lectures I'm assuming that you've already watched it so you already know about security groups I'm gonna select an existing security group which is this one over here allow SSH inbound you can see it allows SSH protocol on port 22 from all IP addresses the source of any is okay for lab environments or lab setups but for production environments this is not recommended for production setup you want to tighten that you want to make sure that only specific IP addresses are allowed to log in next I'm gonna click on review and launch over here you can see all the selections that you've made and you can also see they've got a warning for you it says improve your instances security your security group which is allow SSH inbound is open to the world and that's because the source IP address is set as any we can review the selections over here if we need to modify something we can do that if everything looks okay we can click on launch and it will ask you to select a key pair a key pair is a combination of a public key and a private key key pairs are needed to log into EC2 instances when you launch an EC2 instance the public key is stored on the instance by AWS and you have to specify the private key when you log in or when you try to connect if this is the first time you're launching an EC2 instance you probably do not have an existing key so you want to select this option over here that says create a new key pair give it a name once you've named your key pair make sure you download the key pair this is the only opportunity that you'll have to download the key pair in fact it says that over here you will not be able to download the file again after it is created and you also want to make sure that you store your key pair very very securely right now I already have a key pair so I'm gonna select that I'm gonna say choose an existing key pair and this is my key pair I'm gonna check this box to acknowledge that I have access to the key pair and I'm gonna click on launch instances alright so it says the instances are being launched to take a look at your instances you can scroll down and click on view instances and you can see that right now the EC2 instance is being provisioned I always like to do my labs with Amazon Linux AMI just because it boots up very quickly if you're not comfortable with Linux instances you could also try Windows instances but it can take some time to get ready before you can log in if I do a refresh over here in fact before I did that you can see that the state has turned to running so in just a matter of 30 seconds or so the instance is ready to log in which is why I always prefer the Amazon Linux AMI that's it for this video on how to launch an EC2 instance in the next video, I'm going to show you how to connect to a Linux EC2 instance for Mac, Linux, and Windows devices.
If you have a question, feel free to let me know in the comment section. I'd like to thank you for watching and I'll catch you in the next video. Thank you.